Uh, okay, let's get started. Uh, Brenda, myself, my family would like to thank you all for being here to say goodbye to our father and grandfather, Ed Moore. As you all know, um, those of you who know my dad for any period of time, he loved to tell stories. So I'm going to give you a short story of dad's life today. Um, so dad was born in St. John's, Newfoundland in 19, uh, 1933 on November 22nd, and he was the middle of seven children and the fourth of five sons of James Moore, who was a World War I veteran, and Ellen Moore. Uh, while the family was uh, not rich by any means, by all accounts they had a good life and they lived through the Depression and, and World War II. Um, so Dad went to school in St. John's. He went with the Christian Brothers uh, uh, schools there and he probably had numerous stories. He probably told you about uh, going to school with those guys. And in 51 when he graduated, he joined the Royal Canadian Air Force and for 29 years he lived in Canada and Europe. So Dad's trade was in communications. So he didn't fly planes, but he was involved in managing the messages and other communication traffic across the RCAF and then later the Canadian Armed Forces. And so during the 1950s, he lived the life of a single man and he traveled uh, various locations in Canada and he spent a stint with uh, NATO in Fontainebleau, France, which is a town just outside of Paris. And so he would always tell me the stories about he bought a car, he drove got a car in Hamburg, Germany, he brought it back to France and that was the vehicle that him and his uh, military buddies would travel the, travel the various countries, you know, going to like the Netherlands where all the Canadians were very well uh, remembered for their efforts during the war and he always said you never had to pay for a beer or a meal in the Netherlands. Um, so in 1960, uh, Dad was transferred to RCAF Stension Penhold just south of Red Deer. And he had a roommate named Leo Rondo, who had a girlfriend named Eve Boris, who happened to be the cousin of Marie Moore. They met one time at, I think, uh, some kind of, his mom would always call it a do. And uh, that turned out to be very successful, and they were married in Picture Butte on May 20th, 1961. So shortly thereafter, Dad was transferred back to Newfoundland, which uh, he always liked to say exactly where, and it was RCAF Station Torbay, just outside of Newfoundland. And in 1962, that's where I was born. Uh, so he had, you know, lots of adventures there. He may have told you the story, and he told me the story, if you remember the Cuban Missile Crisis, some people thought that there was going to be a nuclear war between the United States and Europe, and the Russians, sorry. And he was on, uh, on working that night, and uh, was, you know, like everybody was white-knuckled to see what was going to happen. So we didn't stay in Torbay for very long. We moved to Halifax. A few years later, and mom and dad bought their very first home, and shortly thereafter, my sister Brenda was born. Then the next stop was Winnipeg for a few years, and then we moved. It's kind of the move of our, kind of the best move of our life. We moved to Ramstein in Germany in 1969, where dad again was stationed with NATO, and we lived on a U.S. air base. It was a great adventure for all of us because we always traveled to various places during summer and school breaks. Uh, I like to tell people. The summer before I moved to Germany, we camped on Lake Winnipeg, and the next uh, summer we camped on the Mediterranean. Um, so one of the highlights of our trip uh, time in Europe was a trip to Yugoslavia to visit Mom's family there. That was special because it wasn't just our immediate family. Mom's sister Anne, her sister Anne Gibbons, and their relatives Angelo Boris and his daughter Jane came from Canada to join us for the trip. So one of the memories for me was um, Angelo is a successful pick, uh, sugar beet farmer over in the Coaldale area and he decided he wanted to bring his 1970 Lincoln Continental over. So he shipped it on a boat over to Europe and it was dad's job to try and navigate that thing through the very uh, narrow European streets hoping to get through without a scratch, which he did. Uh, when it was time to leave Germany in 1972, we moved to Ottawa. But mom and dad always had a plan to move out west when he retired from the Air Force and so dad was able to make his next and last posting back to Penhold in, in 1976 where their story all began. So it was there that mom and dad bought a small acreage and dad established what he happily called his Newfie Ponderosa. So we had five acres and a small bungalow there and dad, uh, he got his few head of cattle. Uh, Brenda had a horse, we had a large garden and a couple of dogs and dad could put her away to his heart's content, which he loved to do no matter where he was living. In 1980 he retired from the Air Force and he had a small business there for a few years and then he made the final move to Medicine Hat where he worked for the federal government at CFP Suffield until retiring in 1996. 
In their retirement, mom and dad enjoyed life, and dad took up golfing, which he'd never done before, and he regular, uh, enjoyed regularly going with a round of golf with his buddies. He actually made a couple of holes in one, and he loved swapping stories afterwards over copy. And they made a bunch of trips out east to visit family in Ontario, where his sister Louise lives, in Nova Scotia, where his sister Maria lives, and back to connections with some of his, uh, his mother's long-lost family in Newfoundland. Um, and then they got into the RV world, and first with a camper and then a motor home, and for several years they made many pilgrimages down to Arizona, where they met many old friends, coincidentally from military days, that seemed to be a, a beacon for military families and uh, many, made many new ones. And as part of his retirement, one of Dad's things, favorite things was to have his grandchildren come to visit. Um, excuse me. We used to execute what Gail and I would call the prisoner exchange, where we would drive from Calgary to Bassano to meet Dad and transfer custody of the kids for a week or two. So, um, Mom and Dad would take the kids camping in elk water, kids got to play with all my old toys, my Hot Wheels, and Dad would take the boys golfing. And it all resulted in many happier memories for everyone, and as always, more stories for Dad to tell. Um, my mom and Dad were always available to come and stay with the kids, and Gail and I would want to take that short trip away. Um, after retirement, um, Dad was very involved with the National Association of Federal Retirees, and he became the president for several years. Um, he told me how much he helped help, he enjoyed helping the people um, make, uh, navigate the federal government, you know, certain widows who all of a sudden had to deal with all the bureaucracy of closing out the life of their, you know, departed uh, spouse. Um, but Dad was never one to make, hesitate making a phone call or writing a letter. And uh, as much as he loved typing people, I think he liked the sport of it. It was always a challenge to figure out how he was going to get through to what, what person in New Brunswick, Winnipeg, Quebec, that he could actually, you know, get to the point where he helped these people. And he always looked forward to the annual convention in Ottawa. And he always took the opportunity to visit with his sister Louise and family in Toronto before flying home. As most of you know, about nine years ago, my mom fell while walking and broke her hip. And it resulted in her being, being in the hospital, assisted living home or nursing home for many years, basically the rest of her life. Uh, Dad was to the end a very caring husband. He visited mom pretty much every day. He took the only odd day off, only if uh, it was at the urging of the family, his doctor or the staff her mom was living. So my final memory I'd like to share is a story Dad told me. So my kids used to call Dad Didum, which is Croatian for grandfather. Um, my daughter Sarah and Eric used to go down uh, to visit very regularly. And I think Sarah was probably five or six. And they were visiting and um, she came to him one day and said, Hey Didum, let's go for a ride in the camper van. No directions where to go, let's just go for a ride in the camper van. And so, you know, he put on a smile and he off they went in the camper van. So they started out of the clothes in Ross Glen and Sarah would give directions, turn here to eat him, turn there to eat him. And uh, after several uh, turns and twists, she would go, look to eat him, it's Dairy Queen. <laughs> so I think there are several of these trips with uh, maybe probably with a brother or two in tow. And what really makes this special to me was how dad smiled I laughed telling me this story. Um, in conclusion, I, I want to thank you all for being part of Dad's life and Mom's before that. And we appreciate you being here and being with him and for him um, during the years after Mom's passing and for being with us today. Um, um, after the service, uh, we're returning Dad's remains and then we invite you to a reception at the clubhouse in Park Meadows Estates where uh, Dad lived and uh, probably about 3.30. Thank you.
please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good afternoon and welcome, my dear friends. Today we come to say goodbye to our dear brother, Edward. I remember every Sunday, he used to walk with the walker. And I came to know her name because every time he would come at the front desk, and we tell the name, and sometimes he has to spell the last name. And the person who is taking the name, sometimes they will think it is not more, it is more. And I think one way it is true. More he has shown the love, more we cherish his memories. Though it is a sad day for us to say goodbye to him, but we do remember his love has deepened our hearts and our souls to always remember he's there, he lives forever. But sometimes our human weakness does disturb our souls, so let us ask the Lord to be with us, strengthen us and forgive our sins, so that in a worthy manner we may celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to give us abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring comfort to those who mourn. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give hope to all who believe in you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Edward, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. And for the first reading, I would like to ask Eric to come and do the first reading, please. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 11. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For every, everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, 
a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For a responsorial psalm, Kathy, please. Response, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Response. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd, shepherd, I shall, I shall not, not want. want. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Response. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd, shepherd. I, shall I shall not, not want. want. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Response. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd. shepherd. I, I shall, shall not, not want. want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Response. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my shepherd, shepherd. I, shall I shall not want. want. Keith, for the second reading, please. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this to end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and living for we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to your Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Once uh, a man was sleeping and God appeared to him and he said, I want you to move the big rock in front of your house. In the morning, the man got up started moving the rock. Nothing happened. We'll try to move the rock every day, from morning till evening. And I could see he's trying, but this rock is not moving. So one night when he went back to sleep, the devil came to him. And he said, are you a fool? Why you are wasting your time? Don't you think this rock is so big and there is no way for you to move the rock? Best thing is to just give up. Why you need to listen to God? So in the morning when the man got up, he was upset, finding hard to understand which way to go, whether to listen to God who is asking him to move the rock or shall I listen to the devil who is saying better to give up, don't move the rock. Then he knelt and prayed and said, God, you know I love you, but I'm so weak to move this rock and I have been doing this work for so many days, even I couldn't move a millimeter of the rock. And God appeared to him and he said, did I ask you to remove the rock? I only wanted you to push the rock. And look at yourself. By pushing the rock, you have developed your body your arms have become so strong. I only wanted you to trust in me. When I, I remember Edward, and suddenly we went back to the lockdown, and of course we missed him. Otherwise, every Sunday, he will be there walking with his walker. This story reminded me about his life. Though health-wise he was struggling, but I think he kept pushing his walker because he knew this is the place where he's going to dialogue with God, where he's going to talk. Maybe sometime he was just like Thomas in the gospel today, asking the question, 
Lord, we do not know where you are going, how we can know the way. And I think the faith of Edward has inspired so many people in our parish community. He's always there, coming earlier, sitting there in the back pew, praying, attending, receiving communion. I think he learned to push the hopelessness in his life. He learned to push everything which was trying to put him down. He was strong. And of course, has gone to the Lord as a human, we do feel sad. You know, being children, grandchildren, we don't want to lose our parents. We miss them. We miss them so much that there is no one who will fill the gap Edward has left in your life. And many people from our parish community who know him, they will miss him. I think his faith always kept telling us, just trust in the Lord. Otherwise, you know, our life is too short. As we heard in today's first reading, taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. And this reading begins with these words, There is a time for everything and every matter under the sun, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot which is being planted, a time for a war, a time for peace, a time to love, a time to hate, a time to tear, and time to sue, a time to mourn, and time to love. But I think the way our brother Edward has shown us the face of life has reminded us, trust in the Lord, and there will be joy, there will be happiness. And I think your presence here and those who are watching online, they can witness the life of our brother Edward. And I think St. John in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 13, has rightly said, I heard the voice, the Spirit is saying to me, Blessed are those who die in the Lord, for their good deeds will follow them. And I think the good deeds of our brother Edward, they will always follow him. And they will keep reminding us, trust in the Lord, and believe that he is our Lord and he is our Savior, because in the Gospel, he's telling us, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And St. Paul says, If we have died in him, we will also rise with him. So today as we come together to say goodbye to our dear brother, Edward, let us ask the Lord to forgive all his sins and grant eternal rest to him. And peace and consolation to all of you present here and those who are watching online or people who couldn't make it, that they may always believe the Lord is standing there telling us, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and anyone who comes to me will live forever. Please rise for the prayer of the faithful, and I'll, I would like to ask uh, Dorothy to come and do the prayer of the faithful, please. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We join our praise to his as we say. 
The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ed, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ed, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Ed, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, creator and a redeemer of all the faithful, grant to the souls of, a, of your departed servants release from all their sins. Hear our prayers for those we love and give them the pardon they have always desired. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Make me a channel of your peace Where there is hatred, let me bring your love Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord And where there's doubt, true faith channel of your peace where there's despair in life let me bring hope where there is darkness only light and where there's sadness ever Joy. Please rise. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Edward, we beseech your mercy that he who did not adopt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for you, your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we thought and we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is you who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the blood of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Edward, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit because to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. God is our Father, and we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and from all distress, as we have heard the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this beginning of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Amen. So if you have been receiving communion, you are most welcome to come and receive communion. Otherwise, you can come for blessing. And if anyone needs a low gluten-free communion, please remind us when you come to receive communion.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Edward may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Edward. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. In baptism, Edward shared in the death and resurrection of Christ. May he be welcome into the glory of eternal life. May songs of the welcome you and guide you along your way. May the smiles of the martyrs greet your own as darkness turns into your hands, Father, mercies, we command our brother Edward in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Edward in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of the paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Edward forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. We are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Please rise for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the loving Father continue to bless, protect, and heal you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
stone.